<laughs> that's what happens when you hit that button <laughs> my people ladies and gentlemen <laughs> broadcasting live from beautiful spaceship studio in sherman oaks los angeles california i am mike mongo astronaut teacher and this is astronaut adventures mike mongo's astronaut adventures and you're here live you are here live. Hello, live person. My name is Mike Mongo, astronaut teacher, and I'm here today because in the future, tomorrow's jobs are in space. And I need to make you aware of that. How I get to do that is by having this program every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, that's on the West Coast, or 2 p.m. Eastern time, that's on the East Coast, and all kinds of other different times around the world. I think that in India, for instance, we are, if it is 11 a.m., it is 11.30 p.m. there in parts of it. India is a very, very large country. There's over a billion people in India. There's 327 million in the United States. So India is practically three times as big as the United States in population. What is the difference of size of India and the United States geographically? That's a good question, right? So that's something for you to look up because I like to give you things to look up because the things that I say to you are gonna give you the tools necessary for you to grow up to live, work, and play in space. It can be little things like how big is India compared to the United States geographically, which is the land space. And that is a fine question. Let's see what's going on here. Hey, Gimbal, this is our robot. Good morning. Hello, people. You know what Monday it means? It means that Friday was Fantastic Friday, and we had an amazing Fantastic Friday, and here's why. Because we learned that this company, Blue Origin, the spaceship company, did you know that there is a spaceship company called Blue Origin? I hope you do. There's another one called Virgin Galactic. There's another one called SpaceX. There's another one called United Launch Alliance. There's another one called Boeing. There's another one called Lockheed Martin. There's another one called Dynetics. There's another one called Sierra Nevada. There's another one called the European Space Agency. There's another one called the Indian Space RO, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. There is so there are so many JAXA, the Japanese uh, space organization. China has its own space organization. There are government space companies and there are private space companies. Government means it's for the people and by the people. And private means somebody like you or me owns it. Now we'd have to be really rich to be one of those people. I'm not, maybe you are. And if you are, great. And if you're not, great. As long as you're nice and all, as long as you're kind, that's what matters to me. It's not just about, it is definitely not just about uh, having money. That, if, if that was what determined life, then why would anybody do it? Life would be boring. Money is cool, but you can't eat it. And, and you can't, it, it doesn't translate to experience. Almost always I would rather have experience than money, as long as uh, I have a variety of experiences. But I digress. The reason you are here is I'm giving you permission to live, work, and play in space. And hopefully I'm teaching you and giving you some instruction about some different tools that you will be using to do that. Tools for your success in achieving your goal of getting to live, work, and play in space. Got it? And so some of those tools are idea tools. And that's why I talk to you so that you can hear me and get these, so that you, you can hear me and get these tools. I want you to know that the reason I wrote the astronaut instruction manual was because of you. And that is 100% true. Let's, 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 let's uh, rewind that. <laughs> The reason I wrote the astronaut instruction manual is because of you, and that is 100% true. When I was you, here's what happened. I did not have a me 
to give me permission to live, work, and play in space. So by the time I became an actual grown up, I had already done so many other things that I really didn't have the time to put together to be, to generate all of these necessary skills to be an astronaut. Fortunately, I realized that I would be as happy as being an astronaut knowing that I gave permission to you to become an astronaut, to become a human heir, a person who grows up to live, work, and play in space. Because that's what we call the next generation of space explorers, human heirs, right? You knew that. All right. So part of that, part of that relationship between you and me is that I give you some insights into being a grown up from where you are to where you, to when you get there so that you can use these insights that I give you to get to the place that you want to be. So that when you become a grown up, that it is as awesome as it is for me. I love being a grown up. Holy Moses. Great googly moogly. Great gosh almighty. Being a grown up kind of means you get to do whatever you want all the time. So a lot of grown ups in our life, I have grown ups in my life, of course. They don't embody that. They don't show that you can you get to do whatever you want. They show kind of like I don't have any choice and now I have to do these things. Like I have to take care of bills. I have to take care of bills and I have to make sure there's food in the house and I have to make sure that my kids get to school and I have to pay bills. But I don't look at it that way. Here's how I look at it. I get to, I get to, no quote marks. I get to, I get to, I get to uh, live in Los Angeles. I get to pay rent for my spaceship studio. I get to do this show. I get to have a phone bill that allows me to have this conversation with you. Those are get to's. Look at the difference between the have to, I get, I have to pay my phone bill to have this conversation. That would not be fun. That, that sounds not fun. Or I get to pay the phone bill to have this conversation. Do I have to take out the garbage? Or do I get to take out the garbage? In my case, look, I, here, here's, here, here's my garbage right over here. Like, this is my recycling and this is my regular. Okay, it's just a little, a little kit. There's some garbage right there, regular garbage, and there's my recycling garbage. And that's my garbage. That's the stuff that I get to take out. I get to, I don't have to. Wow, if I had to take that out, it might actually be a kind of a bummer. But I get to because I'm a grown up and this is my place. I get to go on adventures from here. I get to have, make it turn my shelter during the pandemic into a spaceship studio that is embodies. That means it represents a worldwide global spaceship, excuse me, space mission training, a space training mission. Pandemic quarantine is a space mission training. Quarantine is a space mission training. Quarantine is a worldwide space mission training. So one thing makes like, oh, I have to stay inside. I don't get to go outside. I have to, I have to quarantine. I have to self-isolate. And the other is totally different. The other is, oh, wow, I get to self-isolate. I get to practice what it's like to live, work, and play in space. It's up to you. Now that's the interesting thing. It's it up. It is it is shadow puppets. There's a shadow on my face. It actually is up to you. It's up to me. It's how we feel about it. And that's the difference between. So you get to be a grown up one day. You don't have to be a grown up. I know a lot of grown ups who are immature. I do. I don't know if they're having as much fun as me. And I want you to be the kind of grown up that does what you want, gets to do what you want, is kind to other people is generous, is shareful, and understands the value of being like that. Like I like to be shareful and helpful because other people see that I am like that and then they behave the same way. It, it's like, it just spreads out from your actions, it affects the rest of the world. And that's what it's like to be, that's what it's like to be on a, space, on a spaceship. If, if you're on a spaceship with three other people, imagine if, if you, there's four of you on a spaceship, okay? Let's just say four. Oh, it's a small spaceship. You're going to the you're going to the moon, or you're going to Mars. You're the first. You're on the first crew to go to Mars. Think about this. And one person has a bad attitude. They wake up and they don't want to get out of bed, and they argue, or or, or they don't eat the right foods, and they, and they and they are all constantly upset because they don't have the right nutrients in their system. 
and they're angry because they left their favorite toy at home. Because you get to bring your toys to space, you know that, right? And you know that grown-ups have toys, right? Because if grown-ups didn't have toys, what would be the point of being a grown-up? Oh my googly moogly. Look, look at this cool thing. Somebody got me this. I, like for instance, I love this thing right here. Let me uh, flip it up. I've learned how to do this now. I, almost. This right here. This is one of my favorite bags. Look at this. This little guy gave this to me at one of the conferences I did in the before, before the quarantine. I think his name was Noah. I'll have to look it up. He was awesome. And he brought that to me. This is one of my favorite toys. I would definitely bring this to space. This is the space shuttle. That is fun. Okay. So maybe you're, what, what if somebody on your spaceship training mission forgot to bring their favorite toy to space and they're, and they get, and they get to, and they get to go to Mars. But remember Mars from earth is eight months away. Mars from Earth is eight months away. Can you imagine being in a spaceship with somebody who is unhappy for eight months? They're what I call, and this is the, I'm about to introduce, introduce this subject. They're the F word. Do you know what the F word is? Look at this, here. The F word, here, I'll tell you what the F word is. Get ready for this. This is, this is your, your parents will know this. A lot of teachers know this. Here's what it is. It's, I mean, let's move this like, it's a surprise. It's this word right here. Frustration. They're frustrated. You know I love to draw letters on the board. Frustration. Frustration. So that's what I call the F word. Frustration. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I didn't bring my favorite toy to space. Frustration is the F word. Oof, that is 100% true. Gosh. So the thing is, like, like the B word in our house, we don't use the B word. The B word is bored. And the reason we don't do, use it is because when I was you, I had this amazing teacher. Her name was Franny Lloyd. She was an art teacher. And I love to do art. I mean, that's why I like to draw on the board. And we would be in high school and she would say to, we would say as students, we would say out loud, I'm bored. And now you think that we were saying it because we were frustrated. But we weren't, we were just being lazy really. But think about her as a teacher working to make us the best people that we can be. And to hear students say that after she's working and doing her work and working to inspire us and we're like, I'm bored. Think how F word that was for her. It must have been very frustrating. And she said the most amazing thing to us. I really, I, re I, I mean, I'm 55, so this was 30, 37 years ago that Franny Lloyd said this to me, to us as students. She said that there are no people who are bored. There are just boring people. And wow, I want you to know that that landed for us. When I say it landed, it means it impacted. We're like, whoa, am I a boring person? I'm not a boring person, so I must not be bored. And that is very much like the F word frustration. Frustration. You ever get frustrated? I get frustrated. Who doesn't get frustrated? but it's how we respond when we experience frustration. That's the key here, okay? Okay? How we experience it, how we experience frustration, and, and then how, how we experience it, how other people experience our experiencing frustration. That's an important thing. Like when we're frustrated, do we take it out on other people? Do we make other people frustrated when we're frustrated? I used to do that. I have a very good friend and you're gonna meet her on Wednesday. Her name is Loretta Whitesides, and she is also an author. She wrote a book called The New Right Stuff. And in, in the past, when we did the Apollo Moon Project, we had a thing called The Right Stuff. There was a book written about the Apollo Moon Project called The Right Stuff by Tom Wolfe. That's a great book. 
So that was written so many years ago about a spaceship mission that happened so many years ago, almost 60 years ago, 50 years ago, for sure. 50 years, it was 50 years ago, 50 years ago. He wrote a book about a spaceship mission that happened 50 years ago. So 50 years ago, people have come and gone and you're here now. So Loretta Whitesides wrote the new right stuff. And to have the right stuff means you have what it takes to, to do the job, to go. And when Tom Wolfe wrote the book, The Right Stuff, it was about the, peop, the, what the, the, the characteristics, the qualities of character that the people who were Apollo astronauts brought to being an Apollo astronaut. Like what would you bring to being an astronaut? Are you gonna bring helpfulness? Are you gonna bring sharefultude? Are you gonna bring kindness? Are you gonna bring humor? Are you a funny person? Are you? Okay, so that reminds me of uh, I like I love I love I love jokes. You you ready? I got a joke. Okay, so um, what? what oh, here we go. What? What? What's this? It's a butterfly with hiccups. And what did the sea say to the shore? What did the sea say to the shore? Nothing. She just waved. And why don't cannibals eat? No. Yeah. Why don't, why don't cannibals eat clowns? Why don't cannibals eat clowns? Because they taste funny. I got a ton of them. <laughs> so imagine if you were on a spaceship mission with me and I had those jokes. <laughs> you might become the F word, frustrated. <laughs> you want really funny jokes and maybe really funny jokes aren't the kind of jokes that I tell. Maybe you like riddles. Riddles are good. So when you, what are you bringing? Your right stuff is different than my right stuff. And my right stuff is different than your right stuff. And our friend's right stuff is different than our right stuff. And sometimes we could have the wrong stuff and the wrong stuff is definitely going to be the B word, bored, or the F word frustration. It's not so much that we won't get frustrated. Everybody gets frustrated. You ever wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Of course, who hasn't? How about, how about, but you know what it's like when you work with somebody who's on the wrong side of the bed? It's F word. It's frustrating. Great googly moogly. It sure is. When I have to work with somebody like, oh, what about this? Have you ever, have you, you ever got out of bed and made a real struggle for your parents or your grandparents or your aunt or uncle, for your mom, your dad, for whoever who has to get you ready for school? Have you ever done that? How do they get? How do you think they feel? Are they F word? Do they get frustrated? Like, if you do it occasionally, they probably don't get too F-word. But if you do it all the time, or if I did, or, or if I, what if I was late to the show all the time? Wouldn't that be F-word? Wouldn't that be frustrating? Like, you want to be an astronaut. You want to be a human heir. You want to live, work, and play in space. And the person that is, is the gatekeeper that can allow, that allows you, that can give you permission to do that and show you the different ways to, for you to do that is always late. Wouldn't that be F word frustrating? It would be, it would be. So what do we do in those situations? How we behave in those situations? That is what Loretta Whitesides calls the new right stuff. One of the things that, uh, that I learned from Loretta is how to shift. Like if I'm frustrated about one thing, because she and I get to work with, we get to work with Yuri's night. We get to put on a big party underneath the space shuttles that everybody used to, in the before in the before when everybody got together. We would get together underneath the space shuttles at the Kennedy Space Center and at the California Science Center. We would get together underneath in costumes. Oh, you know what today is? You know what today is? It is May 4th, happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you and also with you. May the 4th be with you. So today you get to say to, to people all over, whenever you see them saying, happy Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you. Get it? It's May 4th. May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Pow, pow, pow. How you like me now? 
I told you, I got jokes. I got jokes over here. I keep jokes for you, I keep jokes for me, I like them, I laugh at my own jokes, you laugh at my jokes, we'll be friends forever. If you don't laugh at my jokes, I might get a little frustrated. Or as my friend Mike Mongo calls it, F word. I might get a little F word, frustrated. You know what I'm saying? Laugh at my jokes. It'll go easier for both of us. When you're frustrated, when I'm frustrated, what I practice is something called shifting. Now, what has this got to do with being an astronaut? That is a great question. That is a terrific question. Because astronauts and human heirs, and anybody who does anything, professional athletes, people who play esports, authors, plumbers, secretaries, doctors, nurses, everybody gets F word. We all get F word every so often. It's how we, it's what we do after we get F word. It's, it's knowing that we're F word. Wow, I'm feeling kind of F word right now. I get to shift. And so I can shift a couple different ways. I can shift by changing my, my behavior. I can shift by changing my expectations. Like when I wanted a particular outcome, like I thought we were going to McDonald's for dinner, but instead we went to Pizza Hut. Or I thought we were gonna have macaroni and cheese for dinner, but instead we're having fish sticks or casserole. I'm frustrated. For me, those are easy shifts. Some people don't ever get to go to McDonald's or Pizza Hut. Some people don't have macaroni and cheese or casserole or fish sticks for dinner. They don't have anything. That's our job to make the world a better place that they do so that everybody has a piece of this wonderful life. That's our job. We get to do that in the future. But right now, that's not the situation. So for me, one of the ways that I shift, one of the ways that I shift is, is I remember, I, I, it's called perspective. Perspective is realizing, oh wow, I've got this amazing spaceship that I live in called Studio. And I get to do this show and I get to talk with students all over the world. And you send me questions. By the way, the next person that sends me a question, I'm gonna send a copy of the astronaut instruction manual to. So you gotta figure out how to send me a question. Oh, look. Here's a good, you want to go to MikeMongo.com, all right? Oh, I forgot to write this down. Look at this. You know how the show works? I forgot it. I forgot. Remember I'm supposed to do this? Look. Don't forget. MikeMongo.com. How the show works is it, is it uh, people buy me, buy me copies. They buy me stuff. It supports the show. It, it's like, it's a really simple thing. Buy Mike. A coffee. So, yeah, the next person sends me a question. I'll send a copy of the astronaut instruction manual. Signed. Okay? Whoever that is. And then I'll tell you what. I'll do better. So, and then I'll pick. And then, since, since like, somebody could send me a question right now. I might be waiting in the box. I'll tell you what. I'm going to pick who, I'm gonna pick two people to get a copy of the astronaut instruction manual. And I will mail it to you. Wherever you are. Don't, st don't worry. I know that people watch all over the world. Don't worry. I'll send you a copy. We'll figure it out. You got that? So if, if you want to support the show, you can go to MikeMongo.com and click on buy, buy Mike a coffee. Like that's, that's very cool. Obviously, you can't because you probably don't have a credit card yet. You might be one of these rich kids, these kids who got their own credit card and spaceship companies. I mean, Jeff Bezos, the richest person in the world, he's got a daughter. I think she's 13 right now. She's probably got her own card. Could happen. I don't know. So, uh, but I wouldn't ask her to put, to, to buy me a coffee because it would, it's like, she's a student. Our job is to make ways for you. Grownups. This is, a, so if there's a grown up in your life and they, and they, you, you have somebody in your life who you want to let know that you want to grow up to live, work and play in space. You can say, Hey, will you buy Mike Mongo a coffee? I accept that. We'll make a handshake on it. Pop up out. So. Yeah, the next person sends me a question, and then one random person after that, I'll send a copy of the astronaut instruction manual signed by me. Pop, pop, pop. So when you are, when we're in a situation where we're experiencing, facing frustration, 
we we get to we get to we get to change our mind. Like there's like to be honest, if if the challenge is I was expecting macaroni and cheese for dinner, but instead I'm having casserole. Like that's not the biggest challenge in the whole world. So that's an easy shift if you ask me, and that's a great shift to practice at. That's a great if you got, if you if you get the F word when you don't get your way on something simple like macaroni and cheese or Pizza Hut, McDonald's, or whatever the thing is. Oh, we were gonna go out tonight, but we can't go out because this situation happened. And it's and so comes up. Dang. What did you just say? Don't say that. Think about it. Like, be frustrated. And then like, okay. Now, if it happens again and again, that would be frustrating. That's a different story. But every so often, we get, we, like, life will make a change and we get to shift with it. With it. We get to shift with it. Yo, pa pa pow. My people. We get to shift with it. Yo, pa pa pow. Shift. Yeah, I'm going to write this down. I've kind of figured, fi- uh, look at that. I figured this thing out. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy. With Gimbal has taught me new lessons while we while we were away. This is the word. Here it is. Super important word. Love it. I love this word. So instead of being this, be this. A person who can shift. This is a beautiful word, shift. It means move from one place. So let's say you were at this place. You're at this place. Uh, what would that look like? Grr. Okay, so it's going to be this mouth right here. Grr. And then these eyes. Grr. Grr. So that's the, that's, that's the one face. And you get to shift to, let's shift over to this face. I mean, I hope when you guys grow up that you get to have your own whiteboard because it is a lot of fun. So you get to shift over to here. You can shift like, it doesn't have to be super smiley face. You can be like this. Hmm. 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 That's like a thoughtful face. Okay. And then you can shift one more time because you don't have to shift once. After you get to the thoughtful place, like, do I really have it so bad? Is this situation really so terrible? It can be to this place. That place. Grr. Hmm. Ah. Okay, so like, how would I draw this? Like this. Like that. And then like this. Okay, cool. So, he's got these eyeballs too. All right. So there you go. Shifting, shift. To shift means to move from one place to another. And that is a major skill. If you can learn it as a, as a person who is, um, who's a student, you'll be ahead of the game. You'll have a critical competitive advantage. I know this is, this talk, this particular talk, emotions, emotions, emotions aren't easy. Oh, look, you know what? Check this out. So it's stuck. It, this is one of the best parts. Oh, I'm gonna, I got to tell you. One of the best parts about being a grown up is, all right, so like, I hope on my camera. Let me just check on the other side, make sure. I am. All right, so look, this is my new Star Trek bandana. It's really sweet. Look how cool that is. It's Star Wars Day and I'm showing you my new Star Trek bandana. Bandana, isn't that the way? Doesn't that say a lot about me? It sure does, because I love Star Trek. All right, so this is my bandana that I wear out. I have a mask that goes on underneath too. Boom, just like that. Pandemic, yo. Quarantine. So in space, we wouldn't be wearing this kind of mask. Why would I be frustrated about having to wear a mask when I'm going to be wearing a helmet in space? Or you are going to be wearing a helmet. How can we be frustrated about wearing a mask? I have seen students in public argue with their parents about wearing a mask. Holy smokes. And you want to be an astronaut? Astronauts put up a lot more than wearing a mask. We get to wear a mask. What if we didn't have masks or bandanas? You know what would happen? We would get sick. These actually help. So, see how, see how I shifted? Let's switch this around. 
And that's an example of a shift. This is really important stuff. This isn't the small stuff. I'm talking to you about the big important stuff. Man, emotions are funny things. Check this out. Let's go over here to this corner. I, I sat here the other day and I really liked it. This is really cool. So check it out. Emotions are funny things. Emotions are, for me, here's, the, here's how I experience emotions, okay? Emotions for me are like pools that we dip into. Are you following me? This is a lot of talk, a lot of information. I know that most grown-ups don't talk to you like this. But most grown-ups aren't here to help you get to space. I get this talk with students all week long about how to get to space. People message me all from all over the world because they're taking advantage of that opportunity. They're not, people, students that message me say in India, like my friend, um, well, Manav has been messaging me a lot. Another one is um, Adit, Aditya, Aditya, Aditya. Beautiful names, these are awesome names. And, and, they have, they're frustrated, they're F word, because they don't know how to get a space job where they're from. But I give them the critical competitive advantage. But they message me, they're taking the initiative. And that's why I'm explaining some of these things to you. Okay, so yeah, I could probably uh, do, be doing something really interesting and cool. And uh, showing you something really cool. Yeah, I got something really cool. Hold on, let's see. Remember last week that I had the hydrogen peroxide I learned a lot about hydrogen peroxide. There's a guy I know, his name is Doug, and he is awesome. And he and I talk about goofy stuff all the time, like cool stuff and goofy stuff and funny stuff. And so he calls me, he, he watches my show, and he says, okay, so you said the hydrogen peroxide is in a brown bottle because it's, look, hydrogen peroxide. Look, I just happen to have some handy because I went to the store because it's a disinfectant, it kills germs and stuff, okay? So he said, you said that the reason it's in a brown bottle is because it's poisonous. And I said, yeah, yeah, I said that so that people don't drink it because maybe some grown-up sees this and sees the nice heart on it and think, oh, that's a nice drink. Well, look, it doesn't look like a drink. It looks like something that you wouldn't put in your mouth, right? Like at least you wouldn't swallow it, that's for sure. Okay, so he said, here's the reason that the bottle is brown on hydrogen peroxide. It is brown because light breaks down hydrogen peroxide. It decays very easily and then it becomes useless. It doesn't do the thing we want it to do. So, and what do we want it to do? I'm glad you asked. Let's find out, what can we put this on? Hydrogen peroxide, and this is a new bottle too, so it should work, work really well. What do I have that would work really well with this? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, you know what? I got some stuff right here in the garbage. Let's see what we got. Okay, so it's easy to make a science experiment. And I know I've been talking to you about emotions and everything. But, okay, so I'm going to paka paka watch. Paka paka, I figured, I told you, I figured out how to do this. Paka paka book. And so, I, here, look, here's my recycling. So why, why not do the cool, do cool stuff with the recycling? Like, science can happen at any time. All right, so there's that. And then, all right, so then let's look over here in the garbage. Um, uh, maybe. Let's see what happens. Okay. Oh, I found an apple core too. So look, here's an apple core. And here is a, uh, and here is a lemon, a lemon peel. I use this for my tea. I use the apple for my breakfast. So let's see what happens when we, let's see what else we got. I got a piece of ginger here too. That, one, that might work. It's, it's, okay, there's the ginger. Oh boy. And here's the hydrogen peroxide, got it? This is the stuff that, I showed you this the other day. Look, I keep a knife in the house, pow, pow, pow. How cool is that? I got this from Jamaica. Okay, there's my, there's my slit. And now, and what happens is that this reacts to bacteria. This, oh look, see it's got the medical symbol on it. So it, that says what this is. So this is, this is how you know not to drink this, obviously. So it's, it's got the brown bottle to keep the light from on the inside. So see how much light is over here? A ton of light, but the brown bottle keeps it protected. So it keeps it dark and so it doesn't decay. But being open, just like that, it uh, gets some air and then it starts to break down. All right, so let's put some on, on here and see if anything happens. Oh yes, look at this. 
All right, so I got a telephoto lens. I'm gonna switch to that. Let's see about it. Telephoto lens. Oh, that's cool. Watch. See it? Why isn't it going that way? It goes that way, but it doesn't go that way. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good view. Look at that. Here, I'll put some more on watch. That's what hydrogen peroxide does. And if I know my hydrogen peroxide, it's warm. That's cool. All right, so there's the apple. It looks like some mold has grown right there, maybe. All right, hydrogen peroxide away. So hydrogen peroxide reacts to biologicals like bacteria. Oh, you can see it bubbling really good right there. And that's because the, um, oh wow, you can see my heartbeat. So that's because the, um, the there's bacteria because the apple core obviously is breaking down. You can see how it's breaking down. It's just a uh, decomposing. We, we put this in compost and hydrogen peroxide is reacting to the germs that are right there. Well, bacteria. And uh, so I guess that was okay right here because nothing's happening over here. So let's try this over here. Let's try the lemon. Ready? Now lemon is interesting. I'll tell you why. Lemon is, has got citric acid all over it and it's already killing the bacteria that's on it. Citric acid is on, on lemon is... Um, is something that's antibacterial. So, like this stuff is in almost everybody's house. You can get a bottle of it at, at the, um, you can get a bottle of it, yeah, switch cameras. You can get a bottle of it for $2, maybe a dollar fifty, maybe even a dollar at the store. So it does a lot of fun stuff. Just give me for instance. Now, looking up why that reacts like that is interesting. Like that's, that's a biology that is, um, fruitology, <laughs> I think that's called botany. And then that is uh, chemistry. There's so much science here. And then you can write down what you expected to happen and what did happen. Like I expected a little more action on the lemon, but what happened was it's already antibacterial. So nothing, but this with a lot, the apple core with a lot of stuff. Uh, of like breakdown happening, the hydrogen peroxide reacted immediately. Now this piece of ginger that I had drying apparently had a lot more bacteria on it than I ever suspected because it bubbled up pretty good. That's pretty amazing. So then there's a nice little thing right there. And that is what I was talking about a second ago that I'm gonna pop, pop up. All right, so yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that I could be talking to you about, but what I'm talking to you about today is emotions and frustration the F word and bo boredom, the B word and you and how do you, being figuring out how to deal with that and see, see other people experiencing it so that when someone else is B word or F word, we're not worsening the situation. We're making the situation better. I give you, for instance, the other day, my son, Raphael, um, knew that his sister was having a tough day. That means that she was frustrated. And he snuck into her room while she was in the room, once she calmed down and was playing and all by herself. And he went in really quietly so she didn't hear him. And then he came in, he came in the door and he snuck in pretty far. And she was, she was really paying attention to what she was doing. And then he said, boom! And scared the living daylights out of her. And she screamed and then everybody got in. She started crying and he, he started laughing and yelling and then and then she started yelling at him and she started running and then his the then the uh his mom the mom his mom <laughs> comes out wondering what's going on and so whose fault was that is it was it uh his sisters for being frustrated was it Iana's? not necessarily people get frustrated and she's she's five about to be six and he's nine and he should know better right so how frustrating is that for his mom? See how it expands outward? So when you're F word or you're B word, that's how it affects other people. 
And that's why it's important to shift because being in, in like in that situation, the team, the spaceship crew is Raphael, his mom and his sister. That's the crew. If you're on a spaceship and one of and it's spaceships are small. So you're in space and then one of the astronauts decides that they're going to scare you while you're having a bad day. Well, you're in closed quarters. Those are small areas like this. This my spaceship studio, my quarantine shelter is very large compared to a spaceship. So if I was frustrated and maybe I, maybe I was fixing something and, and uh, I smashed my thumb by accident and it doesn't, it didn't break it or anything, but it just hurts really bad. And maybe I woke up with an upset stomach and maybe, I mean, these things happen. And then one of the other astronauts decide today's the day that they'd like to scare me. Boom! And how do you think I'm going to respond? Do you think I'm going to respond? Well, holy moly. So takes two. There's two people in that situation. One is the person who does the scaring in this case, like let's go back to the original example, which is Raphael. And then there's the other person who is uh, frustrated to begin with, and that's his sister, Iana. And he did this and, and then it resulted in this consequence of his mom being frustrated. So then he gets, he gets yelled at, he's upset. His sister's upset because she got scared. She was already frustrated. She just got uh, startled. That's a good way to put it. And then uh, the, the, uh, their mom is frustrated because both of the kids are upset when she's just trying to get through the day, make sure everything works and uh, think about what's, what's to get ready for dinner, for instance. Huh, that's a lot. See how it works its way outward? That's why having, like Loretta Whiteside says, the right stuff is the right thing to do. And if we're feeling poorly, we get to let people around us know, hey, oh, it's Q&A time. I got some stuff to show you. I thought I figured this out. If we're feeling poorly, we get to let the people, we get to communicate that we're feeling poorly. We get to distance ourselves from other people and say, hey, I need some space right now. We don't say, give me some space. We say, can I get some space right now? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go take some space. That's a very mature thing to do. I'm gonna go take some space right now. And uh, if you're an astronaut, you could take space outside. <laughs> you have to put a spacesuit on. So remember, the lessons you're learning right now are the stuff that you're gonna be using as a grown up and as a space explorer. And that's why I take the time to explain it to you. I know it was a lot. You can look at it again, okay? You don't just have to look at it once. These are lessons that take a while to learn and they're worth learning. And they're gonna make you more successful and you're gonna get to do the thing you wanna do which is live, work, and play in space. And that's why I'm here, because you're awesome. You know that? I know that. All right, so it's Q&A time, check this out. I gotta show you some, some great stuff. Super happy about this great stuff. Okay, first of all, this is, this is like really awesome. Um, oh, can I tell you something? Look, here's some priority stuff. Oh, this reminds me, so much stuff to teach you guys. There's so much stuff, don't worry. You're not in a hurry, I'm in a hurry. You're not in a hurry, I'm in a hurry. You're young. I'm not young, you're not old, I'm old. 55, yo, I'm a grown, grown up, pa pa pow. And so yeah, people are like, you don't look 55, Mike Mongo. And I say, this is what 55 looks like. I'm a role model for 55, pa pa pow, in the words of my people. All right, so look at this. Alyssa Carson, I want you to Google this name. Alyssa Carson is a teenager who's working to go to space. She's gonna be on the show. But I want you, she's not coming up this week is this on Wednesday is Loretta Whiteside. Alyssa's in the future, but Alyssa Carson, you should, she just had Nike just uh, did a commercial with her and she's a teenager who's getting ready to go to space. She wants to be the first person who's, a, who, who's a, to walk on Mars ever. She wants to be the first human being on Mars. She has set her eye on the prize and she's doing the work. So that's something stars. Like I do a star over here and I want to show you this. Do you know how to draw a star? Everybody should know how to draw a star. So if you don't know how to draw a star, will you please do me a favor and practice how to draw a star? Here, I'll bring this up a little bit. 
I'm just gonna give you a, a simple look, look, watch. Down, up, down, over, over. Down, up, down, up, wait. Down, up, down, over, up. Wait, how do I drive? Up, down, over. <laughs> All right, so let's look. Up, down, up, over, down. That's how we're gonna do it. Up, down, up, over, down. 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 Okay, I want you to practice your stars. These are important things because it, it signifies something important. I, I love I love when the star when the when the stars pointed up. I'm like up, down, up, over, down. That's how I like to do it. Beautiful. All right. So. Uh, There's so many variations. Up, down, up, over, down. How to draw a star. Practice. These are simple things that you get to learn. You're eventually gonna learn how to do them, so you may as well practice now and get ahead of everybody else if you don't know how to do it. Here, look at this, I'll show you something. This is crazy, I practice this. You, you can practice all kinds of different things. Look, watch, watch this, watch. Dun, 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 dun. Look, all the way back, I practiced. That's how you, you create, I practice with flexibility. I, I just, this finger doesn't do it. But if I practice, it would do it. Ah, 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 ah. Got it? So you can practice all kinds of stuff and learn, and, and just practice makes perfect. Practice drawing a star. It's one of my tricks to show, I show people how to do stuff. I got, you know, we all got stuff. We all got that stuff that we can do with our hands and practice. And these are different skills we bring. I mean, I wouldn't be boring on a spaceship trip that's an advantage. Don't be boring. The B word. F word and B word. F word is frustrated. B word is bored. Don't be bored. Don't be frustrated. Shift. You feel in the emotion and you decide to move to another place. People are like, that's just how I feel. Great. So now feel, feel a different way. We can do it. It isn't easy. It took me a long time. You learn how to do it and you're going to have advantage over everybody. Okay? Shift. All right, so look up Alyssa Carson. Stars, just learned that. Socks, ugh. Can I show you something awesome? Another great part about being a grown-up, as we all know. Hey, Arnold. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Arnold, hey, Gerald. Have you seen the uh, Hey Arnold Jungle movie? I love that movie. Arnold. Martin Shortman, Gerald Philip Johansson. I remember their names. So when you're a grown up, you get to buy whatever socks you want. I like to point that out because there's so many advantages of being a grown up. And here we're at our Q and A section. So this is where Samantha gets into the picture. You ready? Watch this. This is so cool. Samantha sent me this picture. She is nine. She wants to go to space. I think she's going to do it. She's amazing, and I'll tell you why. Let's see about this, huh? Okay, so here's the first picture that I saw that blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh. This is what she did during quarantine, her and her mom. So she did chalk art, created a solar system, and she's traveling in it herself, okay? She's traveling, she's a space explorer. That's how you do it. Whoo! Come on, that's awesome. But look at this. Wait, that is just fantastic. Look at that. This is Samantha at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. As cool as the other photo is, this photo is amazing. You can see the spaceship factory in the background. Look, it says NASA right there. That is sweet. She is getting, she's making herself available to be a future space explorer by putting herself in the right place at the right time. So I bet she sends a letter to Jim Bridenstein. I bet she does, and you should too. You can see that video. All right? So that was, that's a really cool one. I wanted to see that. That's, that's great. That is great. And let's see what we got in the way of questions this week. Oh, did I, did I write that down? Oh, uh-oh. Rat-row. Rat-row. Rat-row, Roger Rabbit. 
All right, so, oh, look at Dr. Cyan Proctor. She, she uh, dressed up as Rey from Star Wars for Star Wars Day. Wow, that's our friend. She was on, she was on a couple weeks ago. How cool is that? Okay, my friend, let's see who we got here, Anish. Um, I wanted to ask if the productivity of plants in space is the same as the productivity on Earth. Whew. How about a great question right there? And the answer is no, the productivity of plants in space is not the same as the productivity on Earth. It's similar. But there are such different conditions and we're, we've had 100,000 years, believe it or not, of experience of growing fruits and vegetables here on the planet Earth from when we became human beings, when we evolved into who we are today. And I mean, like there's been civilization for a lot longer than people originally thought. We now know the, the other day, we found a piece of, of knitted yarn that was 45,000 years old. Somebody had made 45,000 years ago. That's, that, means that, that means that we've been doing civilization for a long time. That's a long time to be growing fruits and vegetables. Even if we didn't do fields of agriculture, we started to learn how to do that a long time ago. We started to notice how agriculture works. Well, we've only been going to space for 60 years. So we're just getting the handle on that, okay? That's important to remember. In space, how do you water plants? Because water floats. We've, taught, we've touched on this before. How we water plants in space. We kind of use some sort of stratum or material that absorbs water and we let the roots, like the roots grow into this ball, maybe a sponge, that kind of thing. So think of this as a sponge and then we let the water soak into the sponge so it doesn't, so it doesn't settle on top of it, but it soaks in the sponge, <laughs> soaks, it, soaks it up. And then, we, and then we root the plants in the sponge ball. And then we irrigate the sponge ball. We put the water, because a sponge absorbs water, it'll hold the water and then the plant roots can draw the water from the sponge ball. That's a for instance. If you come up with a better way to, come, to grow plants in space, you, beca you could become the Johnny Appleseed of space. You could be the person that figures out how to grow carrots and lettuce best in space. Like what, we have to provide the sun and the light that really isn't available to us in space. If we're exposed to the sun in space, it gets really hot, really fast. So we have a lot, excuse me, we have a lot of protection in space from big blasts of sun. Oh my Google. We have a lot of protection in space from big blasts of sunlight. So yeah, and that's another thing. In on earth, here on earth, there's sun. We can just walk outside. Just the sun is fine. Po -po -pow. Look, I'm going out into the, I'm going out into space. I'm in space right now. Po -po -pow. Hey, Gimbal, where you at? Look, sun's fine. But if you're in space and the sun hits you like that, <laughs> fire. No joke. Space orange. How lovely. So that was a great question. Is growing plants the same in space as it is on Earth? And it is not. They do not produce near as, nut, as, as, a, as much. Anisha, Anisha asks this question. So that's an opportunity for you. Students' minds are free, and you could come up with an idea how to grow fruits and vegetables in space. You can look at your favorite fruits and vegetables. Like, can you imagine being in space and eating watermelon? Come on. That sounds good, my people. And growing a watermelon in space, would it take the same shape if it doesn't have gravity? Would carrots be long or they would be fat? How does lettuce grow in space? We grow a lot of lettuce in space. You can Google it. Space lettuce. Pow, pow, pow. So, these, that's a, that, was, that was a fine question. And what else you need to think about? Do we use seeds? Do we use cut, cuttings? Because some plants we use cuttings. Apple trees, for instance, we don't really grow from seed. We take a, we take an, a, a cutting from a tree whose flavor we like and we place it in an, a rooted section of apple tree. A, it's called rootstock. And then we splice it together, cut it and, and stick it in and then tape it, tape it together and it heals like a broken bone. And then that's the tree that grows out of it from, that, from the piece that we cut off from the tree that we liked. That's called splicing. So when we splice things, that's how we do that. That's fantastic. Is that how we do it? How, how, how do we grow apples in space? What fruit or vegetable would you like to have grown in space? Good questions, right? Very important. 
we have to have the things we like in space to go from Earth to Mars is eight months. You have, like, we're, I would think we'd be growing something, right? And I would also, rank, rank, rank. And another thing is about growing stuff in space is that uh, don't you like to have plants as friends? I do. I love to have plants. I love to take care of little plants, little alien plants. Look, I got a couple little alien plants out here. I got to show you this. Back to the space. Back to, we're going back to space for a second. We got my paka paka. I figured it out. Paka paka. These look like space plants. Look at that. And, and look at these ones over here. This looks like a crazy space plant. Somebody put a little doll in there. Made a little painting. And there's an avocado seed. You can grow you can grow an avocado from the seed. Just put that in water and it grows. You could grow that in space. No joke. This looks like a space plant too. Look, it's very unusual. Look here, I'll give you another camera look at it. Um, telephoto. That looks like a space plant to me. So, what plant would you grow in space? Palm tree? Palm trees are nice. Good question. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna make a point of, um, oh, you know what? <laughs> I always mean to look at the comments. You have to remind me to look at the comments, okay? How are we gonna work that out? If you send me a message and, and I, I don't see it over there. Oh boy, oh boy. So yeah, you can comment what, during the live show. Once again, thanks for coming. This has been a really important show because we learned about the F word. And that's a really important. It took me a long time to learn about it. I'm very proud of you. You're doing awesome just by being here. So keep up the good work. I'll see you on Wednesday with Loretta Whitesides, author of New Right Stuff. Until then, I look, I'll look forward to hearing from you. You can send me a question. You can send me a hello. I'll send you a letter. And you keep up the good work. I'm doing this because of you. You are awesome. In the words of my people,